Jim Coons, Muskegon Area Transit, 262463. Um, for the month over month, uh, October compared to October of last year, we actually were up across all categories for total rides for the month. Um, <clears throat> there were, however, um, two more service days in October of this year than there were in October of last year. So further down in the report, um, you see some negative numbers there uh, in terms of uh, perhaps a daily average or an hourly average. Because there's two more days of service. Right, there's, there's two additional days of service in October of, of uh, 12 than there was in October of 11, just because of the way the calendar fell. Um, you answered my question. <laughs> I, I, yeah. the question. I, no, I have a question for um, Marty. I'm just, we, I said something to him earlier, but um, have we, has, with the change in schedule, are we now caught up? Is this like what we're starting to compete with our good numbers last year? Um, yeah. uh, Marty Pian, airport manager, I, that's, that would be my interpretation of the numbers, kind of averaging out where we had expected, because the new schedule had started in June of 2011. So we've gone through the full year of that. Uh, so if you figure July, August, September, now that school started up again, we're basically just filling to capacity where we started uh, with that new schedule towards the end of last year. 
you know, I would like to point out that um, year to date, we're still up 35 percent, which is really good. So, but so we we won't see these dramatic increases probably going forward. I don't think we will at all. I think we'll stay at about the level that we're at now until some sort of service change comes about that would, you know, push the numbers yeah. that happens for that change, right? Okay. Mr. Danzenski. Did I hear you say film to capacity? Maybe I misunderstood that. <laughs> if I said fill to capacity, then I didn't mean that. No, the planes are not filled to capacity. They're right around 50% <coughs> load factors where they've been running. Uh, this month, I think we're 50% nearly. Uh, the months prior, you can see we were in the upper 40s up to 60%. Okay, I thought I heard of fill to capacity. I was going to ask the same question because I thought that's what I heard as well. Uh, no, but that's what I want to hear. <laughs> Are there any? Thanks, Barbara. The is fifty percent sufficient to sustain the operation once the uh, grant expires. What the airline is shooting for for load factor is probably eighty percent. Now, fifty percent is higher than they have projected. When they applied for the, the small community, not the small community, but for the essential air service grant, they had actually projected a 35% load factor. So running at this 50, 60% is higher than they projected. Is it self-sufficient without the grant? I doubt it at that. Uh, so they would have to, we would have to see some sort of a schedule change and increase in passengers to get out of that essential air service program. Commissioner Longmire? Bob, well, was going to ask, was there a, a plan B? after the, the grant expires? So. There's a plan B, C, D, E. Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, SkyWest or United is our best case scenario right now. It's a, a full service airline co-chaired with United. Uh, regional jet service rule here, so it's the best of the best, really. Uh, if SkyWest did not want to serve Muskegon under the Essential Air Service Program, then there's a dozen other air carriers that would be willing to do so. So those those things are all kind of in line if that were to happen. The essential air service program itself, however, has been authorized for another five years. So we are at least in that program for that long. Commissioner Did I see that Manistee is going now to have service to Chicago also? They, uh, they had service to Chicago. Um, that carrier left and now they're going to have some sort of a limited service to Chicago. It's, uh, if I remember right, it's a small aircraft, maybe a nine passenger turboprop to Midway in Chicago. Because that is part of our market. It? it is. It is. Okay. Commissioner Stone. I just wanted to say something uh, with regard to Commissioner Longmire's uh, question. Um, that essential air service, I think the big, maybe I'm wrong, but you correct me if I've interpreted this wrong, but I think the danger for us is the fact that Grand Rapids is so close because many um, places that are served by that essential air service don't really have a large airport uh, within 45 or 50 miles. Is that correct, Marie? Right. Uh, with some of the provisions in the essential air service program, you have to be so many miles away from a large hub airport to be eligible for that program. Grand Rapids is not considered a large hub airport. Oh. They're considered, I don't even know that they're considered small hub, they might actually be not a hub. Uh, so we, we fit within those parameters. The challenge of course is that they are closed so passengers can use that as one of their options when they do travel. So Grand Rapids, even though I believe their passenger count is two million a year, is still considered a small yes. airport. Are there further questions? Thank you, Mark. Thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. <coughs> Motion is carried. We'll move now to public comment on an agenda item. <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on to items for consideration. TR 12-1141, authorization to purchase four small buses from the Holland Bus Company. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Jagger? Um, we got an email from Mr. Nash and it asked why we weren't going off the bed. I, I read here at 
says we have a three-year contract with him, but is it, would it be better to still go up for bids again on this? Bob Lucas, Community <coughs> Development Director. Uh, the bids were uh, competitively procured in a three-year bid, and uh, the RFP was issued in 2009, and we still have about a quarter of a year left on that. So we can um, uh, purchase them with the funding that is available uh, through this. Oh, so you would have to really use them anyway. You couldn't use it to right. come here anyway. Okay. Now, point. does this uh, increase, is this for like an expansion or is it just replacing buses or what is it going to do? This is to provide, uh, yes, to expand the GO bus fleet. These are the small buses. Mm -hmm. right. So it'll provide additional service during peak hours for the GO bus system. Okay, so this could get, um, maybe hire a couple more people. But we're going to try to, is this more for outer perimeter or just for the whole uh, system? Or? These will uh, eventually be used in the phase two expansion also. Okay, and would any part of this help with the um, the problem they're having when the city, they're going to lose their civil, they're going to lose their bus service, or service of some sort? I would imagine our numbers will increase uh, when that service goes away. So this will help fill that void. Yeah, these buses would be for that. Well, I mean, not necessarily well, not for that, that, but I mean, they could them. help to fill that. Yeah, so make sure these people are getting around. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mr. Scullers, um, Bob, with these, uh, these um, gas, diesel, CNG? or CNG buses. Oh, these are CNG buses. Right. Okay, well, that's cool. Are they the same size as the old, the current? Uh, I believe the they are the same sizes of the small buses we have now. Okay, do they look any different because they're CNG or do they look exactly the same? They the probably, same. they look the same. Okay, they don't have the tanks on top, do they? No. And when do you expect to get these? Uh, I believe it would take three to four months after we order them. Okay, I, and I'd also like, I'm, I'm happy that the distributor is solid. I mean, it's at least part of it. I don't know where, you know where they're made? Uh, Goshen Coach out of Elkhart, Indiana. Okay, good. And the, the price of natural gas now, the comparative price for compressed natural gas is about a dollar and a quarter, so that's a good savings for us. We were going to look at these buses once before, um, I don't think a year ago or better, but now some of them weren't even going to be used yet, they were in a parking lot, so do we still have extra buses or all of our small little buses being used? Even at this point, they're all being used. That is correct. They, we have six small buses in our fleet now, and we're running six at peak. Because we had, didn't we order like two or three? We have, um, we have three units identical to these that we will order that are natural gas, uh, actually four, uh, and then we have a diesel and a gasoline in the fleet. Are there further questions? Thank you, Bob. Hearing none, all in favor, say yes. 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 All opposed, say no. The motion is passed. We'll move on to TR 12-1142. Approval of a contract between the county and Prime and Newhall for design of a landscape, landside pavement rehabilitation project. So, <coughs> second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Just a quick question. Would you explain to me what land you cited? Uh, the land side rehabilitation is all of the roadways on the land side, so basically the public side of the perimeter fence. Okay. Access roads in and around the terminal parking lots. How about that? It seems like a different term now. Airport people. Commissioner Garrison, speaking. Um, the signage in the airport industrial park is uh, our responsibility. I'm just a question there. Um, and I'm not complaining, <coughs> but the Veterans Center that moved out there, it's kind of hard to find. <laughs> it's really hard to find. We have, I can't tell you how many people in our office looking for it. So that would, uh, I can make a contact to the to that center and ask them what their plan is. Well, oh, I, I can do that also. I, I thought maybe that is our responsibility at being the airport. We, uh, we haven't ever provided any type of signage. Basically, these places, they okay. buy the building with a lot and they take care of their own. 
not not our road commission or Norton Shores DPW. It's totally up to them. Okay. You start on your end, I'll start on my end, okay? Marty, uh, on this project, uh, this is coming from, uh, the grant is coming from MDOT, right? Yes. And uh, do we have to send out our RFPs on this to advertise for the pavement, or do we have it in-house? What we'll do with this is we'll design the project first, <coughs> and then put it up for bids through MDOT and then the prices will come back so that we know exactly how much we need for the grant. Uh, so the short answer is yes, the project is bid out, but it's bid out through the MDOT letting process, and we would do that in the spring of 2013. We have to bid it out through MDOT's process. The reason, the reason I'm saying this, because we talk about shared services, and does the Road Commission, do they have facilities to do this kind of work? I did talk to the Road Commission, and they can do this type of work. Unfortunately, this grant is one that's expiring quickly, so for us to get in on it now, we have to have the project designed by the end of the calendar year. And the Road Commission, unfortunately, wasn't able to accommodate that aggressive on schedule. They have some work that they're doing with some bridges and other roadways this winter. But in the future, if we get something like this, perhaps we can look at your best service. Absolutely, and we've used the Road Commission to do some repairs for us as well, but the scope of this and the timeline, they weren't able to help us out. Okay, thank you. Are there further questions? Okay. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed say no. The motion is carried. We'll move on to old business. Well, yes. just, just a quick notice if you've not turned in your evaluation of the administrator, would you please do that? Yes. Commissioner Longmire? Uh, where are we with the uh, construction of the new bus terminal uh, right now that terminal commissioner is um, being reviewed the uh, environmental and in the uh, uh, state historic preservation um, documents are being reviewed by the FTA in Chicago the regional office how long does it take to uh, we should have an answer from them in about a month we bet this has been holding up our process for quite some time um, so we should have an answer in about a month, and then we'll be able to move forward with the other parts of the project and um, obtain the, the land and other things necessary for the project. Thank you. I, I have a question. Go ahead. Good question. And you know, I was in the uh, I was in the Convention and Visitors Bureau uh, building. How's how's everything over there? The building is in good shape, and the building's in good shape. It's. Um, the roof needs a bit of repair, but we're working on that, so we hope that we'll be able to handle that sometime soon. Every time I go in there, it's, just, it's, it's a really nice building. Yeah. It is. I moved my office downstairs, and I, it's a lot more room for There's a lot more room for me now to keep my paperwork, et cetera, in there. So it's a great building to be. Thank you. We'll move on to new business. We'll move on to public comment on a new topic. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.